How's it going? What we're doing is we're working on the rust gang. And uh, where we left off was putting the two front um, strut supports in and then putting the uh, transmission tunnel brace in. Let's take a look at that stuff and then we're going to move forward because we got some serious issues over here. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. So we finally got the braces in. Um, I think they came out really nice. And they are actually ready to uh, go ahead and paint. Um, the owner, I don't know if I mentioned this before, the owner bought uh, high performance suspension. We're not putting that on right now. We use the old suspension to line everything up and get it all working. Um, these were the brackets that we were talking about radiator brackets, lower radiator brackets, and you can see those actually line up really nice and it looks really good. And then you saw what kind of nightmare we had putting that brace in there and I tried to explain to you that that needs to be installed due to the fact that this is a unibody car, meaning there is no frame underneath it. What you're looking at right now, that is the frame and um, the structure that is welded to the body. A unibody frame means that the body is one with the frame. So that brace is a major factor of being inside the car. I went ahead and grinded all the welds down. I'll go back over that one more time when we get ready to detail the bottom of the car out. And then I'll also seam seal everything. And if when I say everything, if you look right here, this edge, that's where the two floor pieces meet. That still has to be seam sealed. And I'll go ahead and run some seam sealer on our brace on each side as well so water and moisture doesn't get caught up in the gaps of our aftermarket floor and our factory brace. And then you can see I grinded the welds down on the brace on the inside of the car. Everything came out really nice. Once again, we're working with a lot of aftermarket junk here. Um, speaking of aftermarket junk, these are aftermarket hinges that we purchased and um, I'm in the middle of taking these off because I actually found some factory hinges and I'll order some factory uh, hinge pins and bushings and rebuild these hinges. Um, I found that aftermarket hinges are a joke. If you are building a car, um, a Mustang to be exact, if you're building one of these, these aftermarket hinges are a joke. Total, total junk. Biggest nightmare I've ever seen. Did I tell you what that tape's down there for? You're probably wondering. That's where I'm going to cut this section off. If you look right here, you can already see where I drilled the spot welds out. And then we're going to cut this section off. And I already made a mark right here. And then down here, there's also a mark that I made. And this is actually where this edge is supposed to be. Did I mention aftermarket shit? Did I do that? Did I mention aftermarket junk to you? So that rocker panel all the way from here over to um, in this area here is aftermarket. Why didn't I replace the whole rocker panel my friend Pete? Why didn't you do that? Can you see the issues that we're having here? Can you see that? You can imagine what would have happened if I would have replaced the whole rocker panel. The back end of this rocker panel was in really good condition. We didn't need to replace it. 
I went ahead and spliced it down and uh, grafted it all together and it'll be fine when my friend Pete's done. I believe that when you are replacing parts, only replace what needs to be replaced. Only replace the section of the car that is bad, not everything. The quarter panels, those have to be replaced 100%. The rocker panel down there, I didn't have to replace all that because it wasn't all completely rotted. So there was no sense in going through the hassle and, and the man hours of replacing that. Um, and I saved the owner money. So there you go. So after several days of jerking off on that little expedition, did I say expedition? Yeah, that's right. This is a mountain climb here. This is Mount Everest we're working on. So after several days of that expedition, uh, we've come to the conclusion, before we do anything on the back, we have got to finish the back, the front of this car out. We still got major, major issues going on with it. And the next thing that we got to tackle is this fender right here. We have got to get this thing lined up. We got to get it working properly and functioning properly. Because now what I've done, I don't know if you can see in the camera over here. Um, let's see here. This is an aftermarket fender. All right, this is aftermarket. And then we purchased some factory fenders. So we know that the aftermarket fenders are junk. They're total junk. They're no good. Um, the reason that we're keeping them is that this little pocket right here has to go right here. So I'll be cutting this section of the fender out and graphing it in there. So before I go ahead and bring that fender over here, it would probably be nice if I went ahead and took these two bolts out because we need to get those out of there. Um, I don't think the fender's going to lay on top of the rail without that. Keep in mind one thing here. Everything that you're looking at here is all aftermarket junk. It's aftermarket shit. Um, am I happy about doing this car? We don't want to talk about that. I'm sick of telling everybody how unhappy my friend Pete is. What I am happy about, though, is that after several years of sitting dormant, we're actually working on it and getting her done. So we're going to go ahead and take this fender, and then we are going to get it on the car. Because it's not rocket science on these things. just to hold it if I get one started I don't want the fender to fall off but I'm going to show you where this lines up on this aftermarket um, yeah down here okay I'm going to go ahead and put another bolt in it just to be on the safe side actually we really don't even need another bolt but I'm going to go ahead and get that in there we're going to have to do some uh, jogging around on these holes to get this fender fit properly. But let me show you the real deal here of why there's tape on the rocker panel. So I went over to our other 68 Mustang and I did some measurements um, all the way from this corner right here. And then I went down to the edge and it said that it was supposed to be 45 inches even. All right, I don't know where we got a half. I think I crossed it out, but it was 45 inches. So I measured on this car from there to there, and this is where we came up with right here. And when you put the fender on it, you can kind of see how the fender overhangs on the rocker panel. Now, this is our aftermarket rocker panel, so now you see what's going on. All right? Now you kind of get the idea that I have got... This, uh, oh shit, where are we at? There it is. Okay, this edge right here has got to be right here. And it looks, by the way, the fender, it looks like it's got to go in even a little bit more than that. So this was my plan. This was my plan. What my plan is, is to get this hinge out of the way first. 
And once we do that, then we can actually work on the car like we want to. I think when we got this car in here, I believe that this bolt plate was actually missing. And um, originally this was welded to the A pillar here, the A pillar. I believe that's what it was. I actually had to go find one of these in a junkyard or somewhere. Okay, so now that we got that off, um, I went ahead and drilled out the spot wells. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bit right here, this boring bit, and I'm going to make sure that we got the spot welds cut out properly. Okay, so what I did, I went ahead and sharpened me up a nice uh, chisel here, and then I'm going to use my hammer. I want to keep all this in real nice contour, so all I got to do is slide it down. Um, we're going to go ahead and end up button welding this, so we'll measure that at 45. We'll test fit the fender one more time, and then we will cut the excess off of our uh, rocker panel to move it back. If you uh, came across this in the past, if you did a rocker panel like this, a rocker, and ended up doing this, please leave a comment below so I will know and everybody else will know that this has happened before. This isn't the first time. So now we can go ahead and put our fender back on the car and then get this thing lined up. We'll go ahead and tack screw it in there and uh, cut, chop, dice, slice, and butt weld back together. All right, you can kind of get the idea of what's going on here. Let's get it a little bit closer and uh, fix our issue. Okay, so we're going to take the piece that we cut off and then we're going to lay that on top of here and slide it underneath the fender, just like that. And there you go, okay. So it was way up inside there. So what we want to do is we want to, and that looks pretty good right there. Um, You kind of see what I'm trying to do here? I'm trying to fit this piece between the fender and the rocker where it's supposed to go. Another thing that I just noticed is that the contour on our aftermarket, um, and I, I, I actually noticed that before, because you can see right here where I measured that, but the contour on our aftermarket rocker panel is not exactly the same as the... Uh, original one. Alright, so I'm trying to fit this in here and what I'm actually doing, I'm eyeballing it. I'm not really going by a 45 measurement. Um, I'll tell you one thing, that's where it goes right there. That's where the that's where the fender is going to bolt. But we got to get this piece in there with it. So I'm going to pull that out. And we know it's not right there. That's where the factory was, remember? Um, let's get a handle on this. We're going to get this on here one way or the other. Okay, so I got to get that on there because we got to get this bolt hole, make sure the bolt hole on the bottom's lining up. And what I'm talking about here, there's a square hole behind that. Do you see that hole? Okay, this has got to line up with that. So that's where that's supposed to be. 
and then there's a bracket that bolts to this plate here and comes out and lines up with this hole here. I can tell you one thing, we didn't have to go far to get this done. We didn't have to, I'm just trying to get this in here. This is what's making it a pain in the ass, is that I'm thinking it's going to be like right there. That's where it's going to be. We're going to have to notch the fender or something here because this will not go in with that contour. So what we'll do is we're going to measure it out with our tape measure and we're going to go ahead and go from here to, wow, look where the fender ends up, right at 45. Can you all see that? That comes in at 45 inches exactly. So we're going to want to come back. If we go to 45 inches on that, that's going to line up like, I mean, just like that right there is how it's going to be. I don't think we want it like that. We want a little bit of a gap here, so we've got to, uh, I'm thinking about right there is where we're going to want it. Just like that. Okay. Alright, so we got that on there and it's looking like that's probably where we want it. Uh, that's a good gap. I like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my pointer tool. We're going to go ahead and scribe down this. Just like that. And then, just to make sure that we are in line, we're going to take our tape, we'll go right down that edge. You can do it either way. I'm showing you both ways to do it. You can scribe it or tape it. We're going to come down here. Just like that. And then now what we'll do is I will cut this off. This will be butt welded to that. We'll spot weld everything back together properly and functionally. And this bitch will be done. Well, I got to get this um, fender fit on to the car, and I got to get really precise about it. Um, so what I did is I put one bolt on the top, but then I came over here, and I lined up that hole with the rocker, the aftermarket rocker panel, and what it's doing is it's pulling the fender in too far and that is caused because this is an aftermarket rocker panel once again so we already had this problem now we got this problem the square hole where the special nut goes in is not in a precise area so what we got to do is we either got to move the square hole out or we got to make a new bracket on the fender itself so we can pull the fender out. So before we do anything and say what we're going to do here, what we need to do is really get this fender off, get it up here on our stand so we can see what's going on. Um, like I said, I only have one bolt in here. And you know, when you're using 95% of the car is made out of aftermarket stuff. It really, really makes it hard to get everything lined up properly. 
So this is the area that we're talking about right in here. And what I can do is I can actually cut it, cut this off, and make a new tab that actually comes out a little longer. Because what most people do on this situation, they'll go ahead and cut this out where it looks like a U. And then they'll take a big fender washer and they'll slap it in there. And then they'll move the fender wherever they want it and then they tighten it down. Now we can do that and that is a possibility but when I was up here and I was measuring all this and here's that special square nut you can see that there's really no room of movement in there at all I mean it fits in there and that's how it goes so we're gonna have to deal with the fender itself but when I was in here and I was measuring everything um, it was almost three quarters of an inch away from the nut and this is what happens when you're working with aftermarket junk. I'm sorry to say it. I know I bring it up all the time. Um, but you got to modify it. You got to get it right. And you got to do it right. That's the only way it's going to work. Is you got to have all this ability and tools to make the bullshit fly. So you can flush the toilet and start fresh. If you get my message. So here's some 18 gauge um, steel that we're going to use to fabricate our little system that we need to do. But right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this to the side. We're not going to work on this because what we need to do is we need to hang the door on the car and we need to get it pretty precise to actually make everything fit properly. Um, this car came to my shop with the A pillar completely totaled out. It was completely totaled out. Go back into the video set and look at it. It was crushed in. It was T-boned into the A pillar. The door was all jerry-rigged and smashed on there. It didn't fit worth the crap from the beginning. And ever since then, we have had problems hanging this door. So let me get that door bolted on there and then we're gonna go from there. All right, I got the door hung on the car, and I was actually wrong. This is off a coupe, not a fastback. Fastback has round glass, and the coupe has square glass, so that's not the right, but the door is the same. Now, this is the door that we used before, and this door was a pile of shit. This is a factory fender and a factory door. And before I put the factory fender back on, I want to see how the aftermarket fender fit. See this? Huh? Why are you fucking okay. acting like that? Because people are spending hard money on this bullshit, and that's what they get. Jump. Your behavior is bullshit. Your fucking jump. Your behavior is bullshit. If I knew you were going to do that, I wouldn't even come out here. Fucking ass. Five year old. Now, I'm going to put the door on the other side. I want to build this whole car. I want to put all the front end parts on this car. And I want to see how it comes out. This is the side that was jacked up. Remember that? Minnie the Body Shop Girl. I guess, Pete. You don't remember? We worked on it for like seven days. Yes, of course I remember. Well, we don't need to go over I was ready to tell the owner, you. come get your piece of shit. And yeah, you just want to talk about it so you can get mad all over I'm you. not mad! Yeah, I can all right. tell. I can tell. One of the biggest mistakes that you can make when working on one of these cars, on any classic car, is taking the hinges off the body. You should never, ever, ever, unless you, unless the hinges are rotted or you got to replace the A-pillar, never take the hinges off the body of the car. But uh, if we look right here, it looks like that body line is going to work good for us. We got the factory fender, we got a factory door, and I'm going to have to go ahead and jerry-rig that up on the bottom 
We even got a really nice gap down here. Look at that, Manny. So I'm thinking everything's going to line up really nice, huh? Right. When we tore this thing down, it was a nightmare. It was a fiasco. I got work to do over here, okay? Don't you have I something to do? I got work to do too, man. Well, then go do it. Good. We're working on the other Mustang out there. Out it is 10, it's 10 minutes to 12, you know that. Good, then I'm going to go eat lunch. I'll be in there in a minute. So, the right-hand side, I know that lines up really nice. Um, we're going to go ahead and build this whole thing and get everything lined up where it's supposed to be. But, uh... From using this piece of shit here, you see that? You see that right there? Huh? Do you see that? Watch this. Let's go play football today, people. Let's go. So between that pile of shit right there and Mr. Three Hundred Dollar Door Guy here, we got fucked. Do you know I didn't even charge the owner for this fucking door? I told him I'm gonna go ahead and buy it and gamble. And that if it ain't right, then I'm not going to try it. I'm the one that got fucked on that deal. I'm the one that got fucked. Okay, look what's going on over here. Do you see what's going on? No, and I don't even want to I got see fenders it. on, doors, and hood. Okay, look. The hood came out beautiful. Now, I'm going to let everybody know this is an aftermarket. Aftermarket. Remember those words. Are you going to take it off and throw it on the floor? No, I'm not. Why don't you? I think you should. Well, I'm not going to. Come I on over here. I think you ought to. So we got the passenger side bullet. Everything's looking really good now that we got factory fenders and a factory 68 door. I'm going to show you what we're going to do with the bullshit. I'm going to show you what we're going to do with the trash. Come on, okay. bring it over here. You know, you can do this. Bring it on over here. I want you to put this on. Come on. Bring it over here. I'm going to show you what we're doing with okay. the trash. Okay, Pete. Okay. Stop a minute. You can put this on the tripod, and I can go finish my work. Yeah, well, I want you to film, because I don't want to hit accidentally hit my You're camera. You're not going to hit anything. Okay? Let me show you what we're going to do with the trash. Okay? okay. Let me show you. Watch what I did. Watch this. You ready? You ready? There's your trash. You already did this once. Did I? Well, now I did it four times. You're such a great guy. We need that. All right. Let's see there. Huh? Let's see what's going on. Bring the camera over here. Lucky you didn't cut it too short, man. I didn't cut it too short because all we need is this little section right here. Okay. Can we get rid of the trash? Can we get rid of the trash? Huh? There you go. And now, and now everybody, he's going to have to go out there and pick them up. Okay. Again, let okay, me say it again. On. Now he's going to have to go out there and pick them up. Right, hold on, let me show you something. Follow me with the camera like a magnet. Okay, you want to do that? Follow me with the camera, because we didn't, because you didn't see the situation. You were, you know, focus on, okay, you ready? Take two, you ready? Follow it like a magnet. Here we go. Are you ready? Follow it. That's the trash. And again, like I said, he's gonna have to go out there and pick them up. Okay, hold on. 
We can yeah, do this. Right. Yeah, look at that, everybody. Are you liking what you see? Not me. Blind. I'm blinded. What a... I can't even say it. What an idiot. What a waste of time. I'm doing I here. could be done. I could be I'm done doing? doing what I'm doing. You but instead, I am filming I'm getting ready to trash. trash I'm getting ready to the trash. Yeah. I'm getting ready to the junk. Are you going to crawl inside the Scrap dumpster fire. with it? I hope it doesn't fail. Oh, damn. See that? Bam, bitch! Wow, it's just, wow. It's a done deal right here. The Frankenstein Mustang's looking like a car. And we just got rid of about 36 pounds of junk. I don't even want to keep that for scrap iron. I don't even want to do that. Can I go back to work now? Go back to work. Yeah. Okay, go back to work. Why don't you water your desert plants some more? My beautiful desert garden. No, uh, we don't want to water it today. If we put too much water on it, might kill it. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete. Working my ass off, getting chewed out, getting cussed out, looking like a jerk off, acting like an idiot, and playing the clown act over here at Southwest Rod and Custom, Moab, Utah. Where's the other one at? Where'd the other one go? Well, there it is right there. That's not trash. That's not trash.